wanted to address your video. First of all, you say that people like Robert Spencer and Ion Hirsi Ali are liars. You act like that non-Muslims non are the ones that are portraying Islam in a negative, violent way. There are many Muslims all throughout the world that believe in the radical form of Islam that Spencer and Ali speak of. And there are many Islamic scholars that say jihad warfare is incumbent on every Muslim. I am not saying radical Islam is the only form of Islam, but moderate Muslims like yourself must step up to the plate and address the things that these radicals quote from the Quran and Hadith instead of acting like they don't exist. In the next few minutes, I would like to give you examples of Muslims that believe in the radical form of Islam that Robert Spencer and the, li and the likes of speak of. The first example is Imam Musa from Washington, D.C., who speaks of burning America down as well. He is on record denying the Holocaust and supporting Hamas and Hezbollah. You also have another Imam from Washington, D.C., that justifies suicide bombings in a lecture on the mosque website. He also denies the Holocaust. They both use the Quran and Hadith to back up many of these claims. You may view all of these videos right here on my profile on YouTube. You also have another Imam named Jahar Tahar Ahmad in Georgia. He preaches that Islamic law should rule over the whole world and that Muslims must have must be superior and have control over the infidel. This definitely goes against any sort of freedom or freedom of religion. He also invokes the example of Muhammad and gives Quran to justify this. There is also two Islamic scholars in Canada, one by the name of Ali Hindi. He, he went on Canadian television and said that Canada should be put under Islamic law and that women should be killed for committing adultery. And that is, that is the way of Islam. He also encouraged the Islamic community of Canada to not work with the law enforcement. He also said that Al-Qaeda supporters had found spiritual fulfillment at his mosque in Canada. Isn't that comforting? All of these examples are just some of the Islamic leaders here in America and the West that believe in this radical form of Islam that you seem to act like is just fake or made up by black Zionist people like me. Now let's move on to an Islamic website called Islam QA. You can view the website at IslamQA.com. This site is ran by Muhammad Salah al Manajid. He he has many he has many books that are even sold on, on many Islamic websites. On his website, IslamQA.com, he speaks of jihad. He speaks of the spiritual jihad of the individual, but he also mentions that it is an incumbent on all Muslims, according to the Quran, to wage jihad warfare in order to spread Islam. It is permissible to wage jihad warfare to spread Islam as long as the ruler gives the go ahead. As a rule, as long as the ruler gives the go ahead to do this, he also speaks of the reward of heaven for those that fight unbelievers and are killed. He also ju justifies waging jihad against anyone who stands in the way of the spread of Islamic rule. This Islamic scholar even says it is the obligation for Muslims to hate, to hate unbelievers in their hearts. Finally, he even says that Muslims should not allow churches or synagogues to be built in their land, and that non-Muslims should not be allowed to send missionaries into their countries. Sounds a lot like Saudi Arabia. That really sounds like freedom of religion to me. And once again, he quotes Quran and Hadith to justify all the things he says. If you would like to visit the website, you can visit it at at islamqa.com to see all the things I've mentioned. I can also cite for you many examples of Muslims invoking Muhammad and Quran to justify jihad warfare and Islamic rule over the world all throughout the Middle East. For example, okay, here we go. As late as November 2003, the website of the Islamic Affairs Department of Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabian Embassy in Washington, D.C., 
This is the we website now for the Sa for Sa the Saudi Arabian Embassy in Washington D.C. It contained exhortations to Muslims to wage violent jihad and em emulation of Muhammad. This is what it said. The Muslims are required to raise the banner of jihad in order to make the wor word of Allah supreme in this world, to remove all forms of injustice and oppression, and to defend the Muslims. If Muslims do not take up the sword, the evil tyrants of this earth will be able to continue oppressing the weak and the helpless. It quotes Muhammad delivering Allah's words. Whoever my slaves comes out to fight in my way, seeking my pleasure, I guarantee him that I will compensate his suffering with reward and booty. And if he dies, I would forgive him, have mercy on him, and let him enter paradise. Also, in December 2003, you have an Ira Iraqi jihad warrior explain why he was fighting against the American troops. And this is what he said. The religious principle is that we cannot ex accept to live with infidels. The prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Hit the infidels wherever you find them. The man, the man was, of course, quoting not a saying of Muhammad, but the Quran 9.5, the verse of the sword, as it is called. But as e it is easy to see why he could he, he confused that, the, that too. For also, you have Fawaz bin Muhammad al-Nasahani, the commander of the jihad group that killed 22 people in a jihad attack in, in Kobar, Saudi Arabia on May 29, 2004. And he said, he said that attack was in accordance with Muhammad's wishes for Arabia. And this is what, Ma and this, is what this man said. We are Mujahideen. We want the Americans. We have not come to aim a weapon at the Muslims, but to purge the Arabian Peninsula, according to the will of our prophet Muhammad, of the infidels and the polytheists who were killing our brothers in Afghanistan and Iraq. We began to comb the site looking for infidels. We found Filipino Christians. We cut their throats and dedicated them to our brothers, the Mujahideen and the Philippines. Likewise, we found Hindi engineers and cut their throats too. Allah be praised. That same day, we purged Muhammad's land of many Christians and polytheists. As you can see, and I can give you countless other examples of radical Muslims invoking the Quran and Hadith to justify warfare. Now, is this the correct form of Islam? It really doesn't matter. The point being is that there are those that are doing this. And as a moderate Muslim, I would hope that instead of acting like people like me and Robert Spencer have, have made uh, up these things, that you would stand with us in denouncing these people and standing up against them. Also, Further, I would, I would be curious to hear a response from Muslims about my video on the Free Muslim Coalition. I have yet to hear any response as to why the Muslim community in America is not backing this group. Well, I could go on and I would like to, I have a lot more to say, but I must stop this here now because I only have about a minute left. Well, I will be interested in hearing your all's responses. Thank you.